I'm Joan Manson of Manson Fine Art, and today I'm going to be doing a demonstration of my first use of Karen Dash's Neo Color 2. I have worked with the graphy tints from Derwent to create this art, and with Faber Castell over water soluble graphite pencils to create these images. And I also worked with watercolor, uh, trying to master that medium and created these images. So in seeing what I've done in the past, I hope you understand what I am trying to accomplish with the Neo Color 2 water soluble crayons. I'd like to come close to or surpass what I've done with these other mediums. So for Christmas, my sister gave me money and she said, perhaps, you know, or maybe you can find a new media to try. And I thought about that and I thought I had tried everything there was. And then I realized while looking at oil pastels that I'm not especially fond of, and maybe there was something else. And while I was scrolling around those on Amazon, I found the Caran d'Ache uh, Neo Color 2 Aquarelle Water Soluble Crayons. And I hadn't really, I'd heard of them before and I hadn't really thought much about it. I have, as I showed in the introduction, made lovely work with watercolor pencils and watercolors and uh, graphy tint and water soluble graphites but I have never used the Neo Color 2. I looked at samples of work done no, most of which were not going to be used or are being used the way I intend to use them but I saw that the colors were very vibrant and very strong and there was a strong possibility that I might find a new avenue for my fine art. So I got them. This is the Karen Dash Neo Color. I got the 40. I probably only needed the 30 because it's not like colored pencils. You really can blend the colors and create additional colors with the Karen Dash Neo Color 2. Uh, they come with, I don't know. little stickers that you put on things um, <laughs> for which I do not understand the purpose. Um, I have owned and worn out many uh, watercolor brushes. Those are the brushes that have a reservoir and you brush with them. But I have found over time that in working with watercolor, uh, I prefer to use actual brushes. And so that's my plan with this. I have given away lots of watercolor brushes, but I kept many, and that's what I'm going to work with to start with. Now, I've also given away all of my watercolor pencils, but I thought, hey, I'll get a small set of the Karen Dash. This is the 12 uh, pencil set, and we have all the primary colors and the secondary colors in brown and black does not come with white, but I do have the white crayon, so that's that's just fine. And in watercolor, when you're working on white paper, the premise is, the idea is that the paper is the white and you leave it blank. But I will also be trying at some point using this on black paper, in which case that white um, crayon is going to come in handy where I'll see how that works. Watercolor 
for me has not worked especially well on black paper, but um, I still continue to, to use the black paper with my pastels. So we're going to see how this works. I'm going to set this aside for now. I'm going to be starting out with the Stonehenge uh, hot press. This is a 9x12. It's a lovely white paper. It is a block. And I want to start by using with experimenting with the watercolor paper because I'm going to be using a lot of water. Now I also ordered the Stonehenge craft paper. I just love paper. I'm a paper addict. And I'm not even get in, getting into how many types of papers I gave away and how many I still own. But um, this is a brown craft paper. It's, you know, certainly thicker than butcher paper and uh, about the size of a piece of watercolor paper. I'm going to use this later to experiment with, mostly for experimenting with the tint. And I thought it would be fun to use with my pastels as well. But it's not really a watercolor paper and I don't want to deal with warping at this point. I just want to see what the what the crayons do. But I was really excited to get this so I'm very happy. It does say on the little cover that it was inspired by the industrial look of paper grocery bags. It's a nice earth tone. It really is and it's good. All their papers are really made for printmaking and um, they all have a, a co high cotton or cotton um, content and they are all archival and acid free so um, that's very that's very important if you want your work to last but also if you want it to work if you want your work to last through the actual project you really want to have a paper that is viable for the media that you're using okay so let me just put this aside And now this is something that I did a week or so ago using pastel pencils and um, a bit of pan pastel in the background. This was my reference photo. Now the reference photo isn't really spectacular but I've done enough pictures of cardinals that I can determine what I'm doing. This cardinal is a juvenile. There's a lot of yellow, a beginning of light orange, and a sort of brown with hints of red on the rest of the body. And that's how you know it's a juvenile. It will then grow into having a fully red body with a light tummy. Or if it's a female, it will have red on the head and more brown in the body. And this, so we can see. Now, of course, when I draw freehand, I always draw la 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 louder, larger than, I, than the actual work, which is why when I'm trying to do something the same size as, the, as a reference photo, I trace or I grid. But um, when I'm work, when it doesn't matter, I work freehand. So I'm going to put this over here. Excuse me this over here and now I have water containers this is from Faber-Castell I've had this for a while it's for holding water and it collapses when you don't need it right now and I have a small one I have many brushes and since I'm working on white I am going to need a pencil and I'm just going to use my Dixon Ticonderoga number two pencil. This is the best pencil in the world. I say that knowing that many other people think their pencils are the best in the world. And I've used many that are really spectacular. But for a good drawing number two pencil, soft lead, Dixon, the Dixon Company makes an excellent pencil. This is the pencil I learned to draw with 70 years ago. And I used all through school, all through drawing. It's what I always looked for. And uh, while I have a lovely collection of pastel pencils, 
uh, or, and I have a lovely collection of graphite pencils and graphite mechanical pencils. So many, so many wonderful things. Try to get the camera straight here for the work. Um, I still use this and I have a box full of them. And in fact, for Christmas, I gave away little drawing pads and number two pencils for people. And so they could take notes and possibly sketch. Okay, I am. This is, uh, as I said, Stonehenge Aqua Hot Press. The difference between hot press paper and cold press paper, if you're not familiar, is that the cold press is a bit rougher. Okay. I'm going to bring my little guy over here. I don't know whether or not there's going to be a background. And I'm going to take some liberties in my drawing. See this thing that I do where I put my thumb over my hand like a left-handed person, even though I'm right-handed? That is because my left-handed brother taught me how to write. And while I also go like this, I frequently just slip into this. There's an eye over here. Here's an eye over here. And let's see. You would think that with all the years of drawing that I've done, that I would work in a gesture fashion as opposed to a contour fashion. But I taught myself how to draw from comic books and from magazine illustrations. I used the Breck ads that were painted in pastels by Ralph William Williams. He wasn't the first artist, but he was the one who was doing the illustrations when I was practicing. And they were all done, almost all of non-models. Uh, not, you know, the idea was to have the average girl next door who is a user of Breck shampoo. And they put those ads in ladies' magazines throughout the country to sell their product. And I use those illustrations to practice drawing. Most of them, or maybe not most of them, uh, as I recall, were three quarter images. Occasionally there was a profile but I enjoyed practicing with them, um, just drawing. I didn't do painting or anything. I just practiced drawing them and learning how to know the human face from those. Uh, in working with a water soluble product, you can also, I could easily have used um, that one here. I do have watercolor pencils somewhere, uh, but I could have used a watercolor pencil 
Here we go. I used to have lots and I've given those away as well, but this is from Generals. Uh, you can buy them by the dozen. They're sketch and wash, about the equivalent of a number two. And uh, you can, I could have easily gone in and done a light sketch and it would have blended in with the, and watered away with the, the crayons. I'll put that over there for future use. But I chose to go this way. Well, I'm making him a little bit rounder. I think we need to go this way a bit. And the number two pencil comes with an excellent pearl eraser. Not a hard one, not a funky one, but one that really, really works. It's so nice to know that some of the things from my childhood are still around and still working. Okay, I think I'm happy with that. I'll put that over there. I'll worry about my branch. Okay. Let me bring this over here so I can see it better. This is a little trepidation with what I'm doing. I haven't quite got myself well organized. Let's see if I've got this over here correctly. Yeah. Bring that over there a little bit. I have a plate here for blending. Okay. And I'm going to start with. out a couple of brushes and this will change as things move on with the medium you know I I'm going to end up using mainly there we go mainly the same tools I do that with everything. I think probably most people do. You experiment, you see what works best, and you're drawn back over and over again to the same materials. Let me put those over there. I have a filbert, and I have um, an oval wash brush, and this is a number two. They're all from different companies. They're all watercolor. Let me put those over there. And I'm going to take a look at my wonderful crayons and take a look at my picture here. A bit of you, and I'll mix those two. I, I mean, I can certainly go and have this color here and that color here and this color here. I can do that. Um, I'm a person who likes to blend, so I think what I will do is eliminate these two colors. I'll start with the yellow and, and this red, and I will blend them in. Um, this is a scarlet. The names are on the papers, and this is just yellow. And then that will bring that back. Now, I will need the white to blend in. For, I'm lighting at some points. This is a simple brown. I think I'll use that with a touch of with a touch of ultramarine when I do the tail of the shadow areas and or perhaps I should use the purple hmm interesting I'll leave that aside okay I may include that this is um, 
violet and violet and yellow are contrasting colors so they bounce off each other and it gives a little bit more vibrancy i don't want to overdo it but i do want to do it but i do want to include that and so let me put these here on the side of my paper and then Below the claws, I will use I will use the red just a touch and blend it down with the, with the brush. Now, if everything that I've seen, people are solidly applying the crayon to the paper. Sometimes they're using water, sometimes they're not. They're blending it down and they're blending down a very heavy layer. I'm hoping to work a little bit more lightly. If that doesn't work, I'll go a little heavier. Um, I'm going to start pretty heavy over here on the beak because the beak is strong and solid. And you know, I really should have uh, erased a bit of that. Too late we'll work on it i'm going to take a touch of bringing brown over here this is an experiment this is the first time i have ever used this medium now just to experiment in this first part That was the wrong eraser to use. That's a colored pencil eraser. Okay. And I'm going to use, I'm going to dip my filbert brush in. Filbert is my favorite shape of brush to use. Now I'm going to take a bit of the brown and the yellow together and create a greater shadow here. And do the same here. And then I'm going to bring the crayon itself up the yellow, comes a little bit higher. There we go. Well, that's kind of nice. Blending with the brown a bit, covering it up. Okay. Now I'm going to bring in very lightly the red. I'll be doing several pieces before I master this. It takes a while. But I, you know, the fun part is experimenting.
And I know you're wondering why I have that blade sitting there. In the event that I want to mix colors beyond on the paper, I can do it on that plate. It's a porcelain plate, works beautifully. bring in the yellow and I can erase the yellow the line against the yellow here, the pencil line. Okay. That's what I'd meant to do around the beak earlier and I didn't. I'm not pressing very hard. Not worried about what direction I'm going because I'm going to be diluting this with water and painting it. I have really great hopes for this medium. So I'm going to spend as much time as I need to to figure out the best ways to approach it. You know, working with pan pastels, I was determined that my creations would be using pretty much only the pan pastels. And for the most part now, unless I do something in pencils deliberately, I want to do that. I want the work to be mostly of one particular medium with a few accents. I know a lot of people use the pan pastel as background because it works beautifully as background, but that's not what I want colors are beautiful and I want to use the strength of that medium that way. So I'm experimenting with this because I see other possibilities that I haven't seen in demonstrations. doesn't mean nobody has ever done it. It simply means that I've not seen it. And that's, I think, oops, I need to do the brown over here as well. The reason for doing the brown over the red is because the wings are red, red and brown. But I want I want this shadow to reflect the red as well. I don't want it to just reflect brown or red or purple or whatever. And I'm going to bring in. Bit of the purple over here as well, the violet, excuse me. Or 
I see the shadows are the darkest. I said, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. This is the first. going to bring this little guy over here and I am going to use the filbert in the white here now I can also wet this first I'm not doing it this time because I want to concentrate on how the medium works but it's my thinking that I'm going to be doing that as well in the future It really blends smoothly. I'll put the eyes in later. And there are pencil lines that I may not be able to cover up that I I didn't handle correctly, and that's okay. I'll work that out. I'll probably do future drawings with the water soluble pencil. And you really can wash away from what I'm seeing here those crayons. The streaks are gone and growing. Very rich color. Very rich. Yeah, very rich color. And there are a lot of tricks I'd like to use. Now I don't have to add water to that, but I'm going to. I'm going to blend it in a bit. And if I don't feel that I've got a good highlight, I'll just use a gel, a white gel pencil. Okay, let me move in with. using this
nice. We can build up very nicely like this. Dogs are barking downstairs. What a weird household going on right now. And I want to do a little experiment with the white. I'm not sure how strong this white is or how well this white works over the other things. I don't like it. Don't want to dull it down, which white will often do. See how this works. Won't see it really until it dries more. And I'm using the number two brush. back up. You know, I'm going to try this and see how this works with blending on the plate with the colors. I make a drip and I double check the camera to make sure you can see what I'm doing. Let's bring this down a bit. Very good. Okay. I have to double check the camera by standing up. I'm using my smartphone. Okay. And then let's bring in the purple. Purple and yellow will make brown. I want to make a good shadow. There is a black in here and I might add the black to it. So what I'm doing here is very watery. Not as thick as a regular watercolor would be. And then I can just take it and dip it <laughs> and cause it to drip off a little bit more. I want to create more shadow. And I really can't plan this out appropriately until I know how this works, or until I know how the medium works. But come back over here. There we go. Loosen it up with the water. Oh, I got a bit of water over here. Okay. And then over here with the wing. And right here. And here, oh, that works very nicely.
Now let me bring in the yellow. Here. Nope. See how this works. Just like watercolor. Very nice. Okay. And if I do this, it's going to pick up a little too late on the drying process, but okay. Something to keep in mind. And Away, reactivate it, mm -hmm. lighten it up. Water reactivated, lighten it up. Okay. I don't know if I have a a hard edge brush or not. Let me take a look here. Well, I do have. Um, a comb brush. Let me see, it's a little stiffer. There we go. So I can do these same things that you do with watercolors. Yeah. Blend it down. Oh, that's very nicely done. As I said, this is going to take time for me to master. And the comb brush actually works very nicely. I had had other ideas that I wanted to do in creating hard edges, but as I said, I will be doing those more of those as I go. I can move in the opposite direction like this. Okay. I believe I've ever done a video in which I'm showing the first time I ever did something as I'm learning to master it. Just round that a bit. Blend this down. And and do some nice edges. Lighten that up a bit. I do have a lot of working time with reactivating these, which is very nice. This comb brush is an excellent tool. 
I don't know if you're familiar with the comb brush. Um, alternate patches of the thread or the, the brush are cut so that when you brush, you can create the idea of fur or feathers. And I have several sizes and they're a little bit harder bristle and um, they do a nice job. As you can see, I've managed to create some interesting little, using the edge as well because it's harder, but coming back down flatly, creating a nice irregular line. Okay, now let me come back over here. Darken this a bit. Now, if you're using this in a plate, since it seems to be working pretty much like watercolor, um, when it dries, you can reactivate it by adding water to it so that when you've created some colors that you're using, you won't really lose them. Come back over here. There's some lightning, but let me see. I'm just going to use the pencil, the crayon rather, on that black, on that black, on that orange, and then bring in. That's an improvement. It's not the kind of detail I want yet, but I'm not going to overwork the piece until I get it. This is a process of me learning what I want to do. But I can see a curve of the belly into the tail here. I can see the distinction between the wing tail and the body. And I want to get more over here. I'm letting it I just dab this down with the crayon and that will leave a little something there. And pull it up a bit. better and do the same thing over here add a little water bring in the crayon dab it on it'll stay and then I can work it out a bit Okay, and that still needs to be darker. Let's see if this will work down. That shadow here needs to be darker. That's better. Well, I think I should do the perch so it doesn't look like he's living in fresh air. air. I just experiment here. I'm applying the, this with the wet. Crayon. Let me do this with um, my filbert.
Now something I want to take a look at. Is um, adding dark shadows, and I'm going to do it with a pencil as opposed to because I want to use the pencils with them. I'm sure because they're the same product, the same company, they have to work well together. But I'm going to use just a touch of the Payne's Gray. I think that's a Payne's Gray. Yes, it is a Payne's Gray. The shadow of the claw on the branch. And the shadow over here. And the shadow over here from the bird itself. Now that works with just having the pencil. And the pencil is very smooth. just want to bring it down a bit it doesn't it spreads actually not as quickly as the crayon does but it does spread and since I applied it white it well, white wet it really doesn't move as quickly interesting good point not a bad thing necessarily but it's a good point back over here. I just want to make this dark. Okay. We take this over that paint's gray and soften it. Okay. And then I'm going to bring yellow here. Okay. Now I'm going to leave that yellow without blending it in. There we go. nose is too pointy. Take a bit of the white. Oh, sorry, a bit of the water. I am having trouble with my nouns right now. No idea why. Lifting up just a little. It's not lifting up a lot, but it's lifting up a little. And I'm going to reactivate that. And I'm going to bring in the brown around the edge. Shadow just right. Okay. Okay. 
that's a little bit better. I overdo the shadow a bit. Okay. Now it is my decision that I will not destroy the, the work I've done so far by overkilling it. Um, I have gotten a nice feel for what the crayons do. I can better plan out my next project, which will probably be later on today or tomorrow. I have some idea of how they work in comparison to watercolors and watercolor pencils. Very strong, very soluble. So I'm I'm pleased with that. And I think oh I need to come over here and highlight this. The white works pretty well in covering up what's beneath it for a highlight. I like that and just a bit more here and I can add that and let it sit without having to um, blend it with water. It works just very nicely. Well, thank you very much for joining me for this demonstration of how I am beginning to use Neo Color 2 by Karen Dash. It's a water soluble crayon and a little bit with their pencils. I'll try to do more with their pencils later. They work a little bit differently than the Faber-Castell and the Derwent. I don't own those anymore, so I can't demonstrate them for you, but from my own memory, they they seem to be much thicker, much hardier, which is good and probably would blend very nicely with those, but um, I'm pleased with what I've got, and I'm really happy with this set. I could have probably gotten a smaller set. I could have gotten the 30, I think, um, but I'll experiment with all the colors over time. Thank you for joining me, and if you enjoy my videos, I'd appreciate a little thumbs up, but uh, if you've not seen them before and you're not a follower, I would appreciate a subscription. If you're a returning viewer, I really appreciate your support. Thank you all very much. Have a wonderful day, or evening, or morning, or whatever time of the day is that you're watching me.